Hey, everybody, this is Chris Shipman from the Foo Fighters, and I hope you enjoy our headline set from Sonic Temple. Turn it up. What's up, everybody? This is Gary Spivak from DWP. Hey, once the Foo Fighters special performance from Sonic Temple's over, stick around. Don't turn it off. We're going to have a special Q&A exclusive to Offstage with Chris Shiflett of the Foo Fighters.
could take all night Think I need a devil to help me get things right Put me up a new revolution Cause this one is a lie We sat around laughing and watch the last one die Alright, here we go, ready? Look into the sky to see me Looking for a sign of life Looking for something to help me burn out Looking for a complication Looking for the time to try it Jim 
Thank you, Foo Fighters. This is fucking weird. Just when you think shit couldn't get any weirder. Just when you think you've seen it all. You got the fucking wheeze on stage with you. you know? This is what's called these days. One of these days, the ground will drop out from beneath your feet. One of these days, your heart will stop and play its final beat. One of these days, the clocks will stop and time won't
Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready to rock? This is Gary Spivak. You are off stage with DWP. I have friend, neighbor, rock star Chris Shiflet of the Foo Fighters joining us today. Chris, hey man. Hey, how are you? How's it going? You know, it, it, I, I've been better, but happy to talk to you. Wish I could see you, you know, at backstage at one of our shows, but the Zoom will have to do. I'm getting so used to seeing people's like garage layouts on these zoom calls <laughs> yeah you know i'm pretty yeah. happy with my backdrop i did uh, i just added my let it be i like it i like it i see yeah. some marshals back there some fenders some drums good good just, on you just for you man hey, uh, you yeah. know what I, my intro my little cute intro i just did you know hello there ladies yeah. and gentlemen, little trivia question do you know can you name the band and the song from what i just did Oh no, I'm I'm I miss it. Say it again. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Are you ready to? Oh, yeah. Are, are you kidding me? Come on, cheap trick, baby. Cheap trick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would think Jeez. that would be kind of a. It, you know, like in the movie Diner, when um when when the the, the guy ha asked the girl to marry him, there was a trivia contest. And that I would think to be a Foo Fighter, there's probably like some trivia you would have to know. 
some rock and roll just just to be a, just to be in that band? Well, certainly, I mean, in our band in particular, if it's rock trivia you're looking for, it's the nonstop 24-hour conversation that Taylor's having about Queen, which at this point, I mean, I, my Queen knowledge is so deep, dude, just from, tw- you know, 21 years of <laughs> lobby calls and, and tour buses and airplanes and hotel lobbies, and whatever, of, of listening to Taylor and Pat, Taylor and Pat, truth be told. The Foos have had some, some unforgettable shows with us. Uh, welcome to Rockville in Florida, Bourbon and Beyond in Louisville, Kentucky. Um, the one in Rockville just reminds me of like when you go to a Foos concert, like all bets are off. Like, kind of, like the wheels almost come off at a Food Fighters concert in a, in a great way because it's so not planned. You know, like when you see Kiss, Paul Stanley, after every song, every word he says is completely repeated and choreographed. It's like the exact opposite with the Foo Fighters. Like you never know what you're going to get. And does that keep you on your toes? Yeah, for sure. Because what, what often happens is, you know, we, we're, we've we been um, a band for a long time and we have a lot of songs. So Dave will write out a set list, you know. And, and when you're in the middle of a tour, you know, the set list kind of like it, it takes shape and, and you more or less stick to the, to the order. But, but what happen, tends to happen with Foo Fighters shows, if you get into like that back third, that final third, and that's usually when Dave starts switching stuff up, you know, like if, if he's going to go off script, it's, it's usually in that section. And, and, you know, it might be a cover song you haven't played in 10 years, or it might be like a deep cut piece or whatever, you know what I mean? It's like, that's, those are the moments that you really have to be like, what are we doing? <laughs> and, and when he goes, like, when he goes on a riff, like on a tangent, which is beautiful, you and Pat, Nate, you always, you kind of like, you take your position. It's almost like a marker on stage. And you just kind of sure. take your position and you put your hands on your guitar and you just kind of like, um, you have to be on your ready. Yeah, kind of. And you can get caught out with that too. I mean, there's a lot of times where, you know, like when we're doing a bunch of festival shows, like the stage is different every night, you know, as opposed to like, it's like our, our own tour or whatever. And so we might go into one of those sort of breakdown moments and, um, and I'm, I might just kind of lose track of where Dave even is, you know, and I might just be kind of spacing out, looking at the crowd or something. And all of a sudden, boom, he's like in my peripheral vision, running at full speed. I'm like, whoa, you know, <laughs> get out of the way. <laughs> I mean, he's come, I'm sure we've, we've probably collided on stage before, but he certainly comes close often. Yeah. And, but then there's things like John Travolta comes on stage. Yeah. Oh, like the, he did it. That at, was at the show in Florida, right? Was yes. Travolta and, and Billy, Billy Idol. Idol. Yeah. yeah. Like out of nowhere. And that's, yeah. that's, that's what you get at a Foo show. One of my favorite things among many at when you watch the Foo Fighters live is the intro. Um, and by the way, is it just a power E chord that you guys? You yeah, guys, usually, usually. You guys go on E? It's right. It's so, classic. <laughs> and I think that maybe it's part like quick line check. That, that, there's your sound check, right? Yeah. Um, Everything's working. Right. So when he, and then he, he does his scream. And at this particular show at Sonic Temple, it was a really intense day and night for us as promoters. Um, I'm sure. And he, the first thing he said, which you didn't think we were going to play, did you? You didn't think we were going to play. <laughs> what, what's it like for you guys when there is weather or there is that intensity, that kind of waiting moment? Is it the same as just a typical show or what happens for no, you? It's, it's- it's pretty different, you know. I mean, I remember that show in particular. And, and we've dealt with that kind of thing so many times over the years, you know. I, I remember we played up in um, up in Quebec City a few years ago, and it was, like, on this huge, this big festival, and it was a giant stage, like a really high stage. And during our set was just crazy rainstorm happened to the point that I think we only played maybe two or three songs, and they called it because it, it wasn't safe. Um, and that was like particularly insane, but, but, and, and then like, I remember that same kind of thing happened at Lollapalooza one year and where, you know, you have to run off stage and that, it just happens, you know, from time to time because you wind up playing a lot of outdoor festival type shows. So you're going to run into that sort of thing. But I remember specifically the, the day of Sonic Temple, um, first getting a call from Gus, our tour manager at some point in the day, kind of like, yeah, there's a big storm coming and we're going to push back lobby call a little bit. We're not going to head over to the venue just yet. You know, and that's, that's when you first kind of go, Hmm, it's, it's, it's different. Like, you know, with, with what's going on in the world right now, 
you know, this has upended everybody's touring plans, of course, you know, and we had like a lot of touring that we were supposed to be doing right now and, and into the you know next year or, or however long, couple of years. And, and that's a bummer to have to postpone and, and cancel that stuff. But it's from afar, you know, it's different when you've like gone to that city and you're there and you're, you're in the town. And like, I remember that day, just like taking an Uber to a mall across town to get a new pair of vans or so. You know, it's just funny things like stick out in your head. But, um, so that feeling of like, Ooh, show might not happen. It's never a good feeling, you know, it's just kind of, so for the rest of the day, you're kind of like, Oh, what's going to happen. And then, um, and then, we eventually did go to the venue and I, I remember being backstage and it being like, you know, kind of that damp, moist, stormy kind of thing, but like kind of warm too, you know, I don't know. Right. What was it in the spring? Maybe. May yeah. Which is, yeah. Like which is the worst because it's right. Right. Cause that's, that's when the cl- clouds and I know too much about the weather, you know, in the week yeah. before you guys headlined epicenter and you're right. There's some, it's really sad that we can't be out there together um, as we're all, kind of locked in and locked down and there's no mass gatherings. But when you plan something for 10, 11 months and you're there and tickets have been sold and you got bands in their tour buses, the week before was Epicenter, North Carolina. And out of fucking nowhere, we had this crazy Southern storm that knocked out our Saturday, which was Tool and Judas Priest. And then we, it was very iffy on the Sunday, which the Foo Fighters were headlining. Right. The clouds parted and I saw Dave and Taylor and, Dave kind of put his hand on my shoulder. I'll never forget this. And is like, we got you. How long do you want to play? Which is a scary thing to talk to Dave about because <laughs> if, if you say what, however long, that's, that's a problem. <laughs> yeah, still be it might get long. <laughs> so cut to Sonic Temple a week later and, and, and you guys get out of, your, uh, out of your runner vans into production and I see Taylor and he looks at me and he goes, ah, oh, this is your show too? <laughs> it's just well, part, didn't, wasn't, part wasn't, wasn't there a moment that night when didn't they didn't you guys have to clear like the whole stadium out didn't everybody total. like get yeah that's what total evacuation and, and that's, right and that that's pretty unusual you know i don't i don't know that i recall ever saying that before and then having the show happen so we got them I mean, the good news is the show happened yeah. yeah, dude, and we got them all back in, and you can see when you everybody watches the Foo Fighters from Sonic Temple's packed. They all came yeah. for you guys, and yeah. and and Paulie Shore came yeah. too. Um, yeah. as his dad had just passed. Um, ah, right. Back, right. Hey, Chris, back to the opening. Um, what's your favorite song to open with? Um, God, it really depends. I mean, you know. Oh God, I'm trying to even, I don't even remember. What did we open with that night? You opened with All My Life, which I know you've cited as is, is one of your favorites. That's probably, that's, that's a great one to open with. That's also a great one to put somewhere in the middle of, of the set. So it works kind of both ways. Um, it's, that's a, it's, that one, just the minute the crowd, no matter where that song is in the set, the minute the crowd hear that, junk, 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 it just it oh. gets people going. So it's a good, it's, it's, it's good that, you know, it sort of depends on how you look at like the opener. Cause I know that there's like the, also the thought that you don't want to play your craziest song first. Cause people are out like getting beer and going to the bathroom and you want to give people a chance to hear that your band's on and run back in or, you know, so I, um, but that, I mean, you, you really can't go wrong with, with all my life. Are you shocked when a Foo Fighters song live finish under is finishes under four minutes? <laughs> uh yes yes i am <laughs> and and, the, and yeah. that's I, like... it's funny I, I remember it's, it's one of my buddies came to see us and this was years ago now i think when the band was first kind of like stretching out live and i remember a buddy of mine was like fuck when did you guys turn into fucking pink floyd <laughs> <laughs> but that's the beauty of of like rock and roll sorry to go deep or whatever is supposed to be about like when the wheels come off, it's not supposed to be completely choreographed. I mean, you guys probably would get bored doing that. And you know, and you know, it's the old, like, why don't you just stay home and listen to the album? But at Foo Fighters, it is a completely different event. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's the thing that I like about our live show, especially in, you know, in 2020 when, when a lot of art, I don't mean to slag anybody off or anything like that, but you know, like probably most big touring bands are playing to track or their drummers on a, on a click or, you know, things are sort of locked in 
um, you know, in the, the way that, you know, that's just, no, that's just normal now, you know, that people play to track and people play to click tracks and all that sort of thing. And, and so, and I'm sure that there's ways to be, to, you know, go, you know, go off the, off the set list for those bands too, but, but that's just not our world, you know, and I don't really understand it and I've never been in a, in a band that does that. So like, to me, that's the, that's sort of the beauty of, of what we do live is that we're not hemmed in by anything really thank god i mean <laughs> for us as, as as for festival promoters um you know when you have forty thousand people who want to party who want to rock who want to be engaged with it you guys to us are, are are the ultimate kind of party rock and roll band because again when you guys walk run on stage with that power e um it's like a it's two things to us it's a like total stadium rock has arrived and but all, but at the same time it's like we're, we've just been invited to your garage right to so right. like go see like you guys are rec- rehearsing or something it's very yeah. intimate yeah you know? um you know for me my my favorite album and i've i've talked to you about this in the past um is wasting light from 2011 oh, right on. and my favorite opener is bridge burning um oh, and right. that song just rips from and it, it the thing with the Foo Fighters is like from note one, you guys just, it's, it, it's game on. But it's the thing about Wasting Light is it's all, it's analog. It's live. It's almost like a live record. And it's kind of just like a lost art sometimes. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's, 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 it's an interesting thing. Cause you know, the, we made that record and then we made the one after it. Um, Sonic Highway, right? Similarly, you know, like with, on tape and everything. And, and, you know, as a band, we've done like, we've done, that side of it you know super analog we've done super you know it's digital and sort of process stuff as 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 anything um yeah i i i probably agree with you that maybe out of all the records that that since in the years that i've been in the band that one maybe is the is is my favorite one too i don't know nice yeah it's tough you know for me because i joined the band after they made the third record right um I sort of think right? of, yeah, 99. I think of the band in sort of two parts. You know, there's the part, there's the, the years of the Foo Fighters where I was a fan. And then there's the years of the Foo Fighters when I, when, since I've been a, a member, you know, and I really like, I hear those things differently because whether it's Foo Fighters or Gimme Gimme's or my own records or, you know, use for name or whatever, when I hear record, like records that I played on, I just hear the parts, you know what I mean? And it's hard for me to hear the whole, and I, I appreciate them, and, you know, and I, and I, you know, and, and it's, and it's cool. But like, I, I think as musicians, it's, it's, it's like impossible to, to, to listen to it as a fan. Whereas I hear like, you know, songs like Monkey Wrench and those recordings, I just hear that the whole, I just like, when I hear that song, I remember the first time I heard it on the radio or whatever. I, it's a different, it's a very different relationship than when you're like, sitting in a studio listening to the layers get put on so you never get that out of your head <laughs> you know what I mean? right right if you hear if you hear run or or like do your rosemary you're probably hearing like the, that guitar part that you labored over or something. right yeah totally yeah. totally um and, if, here, and plus you know for me i just go like oh i should have played that different or i should you know should play that or what if i had done that or, you know you sort of think of it like that a couple more questions um is everybody in the foos uh dads um yeah everybody yeah. Right. So yeah. when you, when your kids graduate, you will get a coffee mug like this. Yeah. From, we are both crossroads. We're both uh, crossroads dads, everybody. Uh, question well, on that. Step up. Yeah. That's a step up from when they graduated the elementary school. Cause I, I got a rock. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You'll get coffee. Because you get a coffee mug. Um, I tell you what, we, that is one thing I'm really thankful for. And, and I, and my wife and I are thankful for is that this year, you know, we have three boys. And it just happens that this year, nobody was graduating from anything. It was not yeah. like, you know, my, my, my oldest was in 10th grade. My middle guy was in seventh grade. My youngest is in sixth grade. So there, we, we, nobody missed a graduation or a moving up ceremony or anything, you know. So as a dad, every, and like, like everybody in, in the world and in America, uh, your kids were online. Um, yeah. How bad were you as a, as a teacher or a helper? I, you know, I gotta say, I gave up trying to be a, 
a, a teacher or tutor or anything like that long ago because my kids, I've been just in the interest of full disclosure, I was a horrible, horrible student and my kids are, are good students. And so they're all kind of beyond the level that I can really help out much with. But I think I'm a pretty good, like, I'm a pretty good tour manager for my kids doing online school. You know, I get everybody up, I get lobby call going, get them fed. <laughs> make sure that their beds are made and everybody's like got their, you know, do you, where's your school books and you know, all that. So I sort of, I, I keep the train moving. No sex, drugs or rock and roll for Chris. He's got to be a tour right, baby. That's right. <laughs> um, hey, you got a solo record, Chris, Hard Lessons. It came out in 19. It's your second one. Um, yep. Anything you want to tell all the rock fans listening about it and to try well, to- Well, yeah. So I put out a record on uh, 330 Tigers last year and did a bunch of touring. Um, as a matter of fact, you know, when, when we went out to do um, Sonic Temple, I had been on doing a bunch of my own touring, both as like just acoustic solo stuff and, um, and then with, with a band. And I've been doing a lot of it around the release of that record or sort of leading into the release of that record. And so um, that week of shows that we did where, where I saw you um, was really like, when, you know, when I go out on tour, I got in a van and it's pretty low rent and we stayed shitty hotels and we bring one or two people to help it's like it's as it's like sort of down and dirty as as i can do it you know and um and that week of, of shows that we did when sonic temple happened was like it's always like a nice reminder like oh man we've got it so good <laughs> we have right. we have such a good crew and god this hotel bed's comfortable and you know you walk into your backstage and there's <laughs> there's you know it's like everything you could ever want you know so um, it was definitely one of those weeks, but yeah, any, anyway, like, like, so I had toured a bunch through the summer, but when Foo started, um, working on a new record last fall, I pretty much just put that on, on hold. Um, you know, like, I, like I always do, it's always like, that's sort of, you know, Foo Fighters is, is, is a full-time life. And then there's like these little cracks in your schedule where you can go do other stuff. But, um, it's been interesting, you know, with everything being upended. There were a couple of weeks there where I felt a lot of anxiety about it, you know, because like, like I said, we have a brand new record. You know, we had all this touring. We were like, really had a lot of stuff going. It's the 25th anniversary of the band being a band. Awesome. Um, and so there was a lot of, you know, just like everybody else, it's like just everything went out the window. And once the reality of that kicked in for me, I just, I just tried to embrace it and um and use the time wisely so for me i've just been writing a lot you know demoing songs at my little studio and yeah i got a bunch of songs i could probably go cut a new solo record now um not that i'm gonna get to that anytime soon um but yeah just try to just try to keep keep working and keep being productive and keep doing my podcast and and whatever you know and at, at some point here the the world are will turn back on and we'll get back to it. In talking to people like you and, and fans, everybody's really hungry. And when those, when, I, when DWP festivals are, are, and live events are cracked open, it's going to be, it's going to be a celebration, man. Um, yeah, for sure. I could, I, Chris, I could talk to you forever. Um, thank you for joining us. We are off stage with DWP. Um, your, your, your A staff management has, has told me my time is up. Oh, right on. So, yeah, we got, well, but ironically, we have a band meeting on Zoom, like in a couple of minutes. So, so just stay on, on stay with on. the boys. Yeah. But please, <laughs> please, from in all sincerity, from DWP and everybody listening, give Dave and Taylor and Pat and Nate and, and Rami, everybody our love. Um, and we, we can't wait to see you back out there, dude. For sure, man. Thanks for having me, dude. Good to talk to you.